watching Sunday Sound Off with Frank Bull. All right, welcome back to Sunday Sound Off and our first hot topic of night. It will be hot. Will Alex Smith be the Chiefs starting quarterback in 2018? Tim. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think the Chiefs went up. They moved up into the draft to get their guy. I think they're going to season him for one year, learn under Alex Smith, and kind of work with the quarterback whisperer and uh, Coach Reed and, and give this kid an opportunity to learn the offense. And I think they're going to let him, let him have the keys to the car and go play. Uh, although, you know, it's all going to come down to whether this kid can, can pick it up, uh, whether he can, uh, uh, you know, do the kind of things in practice and then maybe in the preseason. And, and, you know, you never know if somebody, you know, Alex Smith gets hurt, he's had the concussion problems in the regular season and they can see that he could play, then I think they'd be happy to put him in there as a starter in 2018. you got to remember, this kid, he's been around. His father was a professional athlete. He's been in, he's been in, he's been in the locker rooms. He's been in the clubhouses. It's not going to be too big for him. I think it's going to take one year for this young man to learn this offense, learn the NFL. He's got a gunslinger attitude, uh, but, you know, you, you, you got to learn the offense first. What do you think, Blair? Yeah, I think, and Tim's right. I think he's eager to learn. It just just uh, getting to meet him and the family over, over the weekend, he's said all the right things and uh, came across really well. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Look, I think if the Chiefs fail to make the playoffs this year, if they lose a home playoff game in 17, then uh, I think the clamoring will be overwhelming to, to have Patrick Mahomes as the, as the 18 starter. But what if the Chiefs find postseason success in 2017? What if, uh, what if that 12-4 and four leads them to a, a home playoff victory and a, you know, in, in, in an AFC championship game berth? Would, uh, is that enough to, to change your quarterback for, for 2018 and start over at that position? I, I, I'm not sure about that. So uh, I think it's kind of a conditional thing. I, I think if the Chiefs don't have have success, you know, in, in postseason or don't, not getting to the postseason in 2017, then, then we'll see Mahomes as the starter in 18. Yeah, Sir, I think it's more like Super Bowl or bust for Alex Smith, don't you? They've been almost everywhere else. Yeah, that, I agree wholeheartedly. That's exactly what I was thinking when Blair was talking. Like, first of all, uh, he's one and three in the postseason. Right. So why should we think he's going to be in the uh, in the Super Bowl this year? And if, if he is, it's going to be because of the team they build around him. I mean, look, the Chiefs didn't go out and give up two first round picks to get this guy because they think the guy they got is nails okay they went out and got this guy because this guy does Mahomes does the things that Alex Smith can't he can go down the field you know, the way you worded the question will Alex Smith be the Chiefs starting quarterback in 18 I hope so and more importantly the Chiefs hope so they took this kid so he can make the throws down the field that Alex Smith either can't or won't make they took this kid to make the throws in the end zone that Alex Smith either can't or won't throw this guy is here to get better at the quarterback position. So the sooner he's ready to go, the better the Chiefs will be. Uh, will, will Smith be the quarterback in 18? Better not be. I mean, this kid better be up and running and ready to go because you invested a lot of your future in him, and he needs to be right. Look, one way or another, he's going to start. You don't give this much up for a kid. I, I don't care he, he, how bad he stinks. He can stink the high heavens in practice. They still have to start him after spending two first-round picks in him, so you better hope he's good and ready to go in 18. That'll be a good sign if he is. All right, here's our second hot topic. It blends right into this one. What is the upside for Patrick Mahomes? Blair? Well, go to YouTube and, uh, and find the clip of Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball 65 yards while on both knees. Um, or, or, or find the, there's another clip of him throwing it 80, 85 yards in the air. He's got the arm strength that, um, that we haven't seen from, uh, from, certainly from Alex Smith and other Chiefs quarterbacks uh, over the years. It's, it's phenomenal. Look, he played in a, he played in an offense that um, you know that, that was fantastic, but it had to be fantastic because Texas Tech's defense is the worst in the nation has been the last couple of years. I mean, they had to score to stay in games, and so that's why he ran up incredible stats like that 734 yard yeah, passing yeah, effort yeah. against against Oklahoma. That's ridiculous. They lost the game, however. <laughs> um, he had a couple other three or four other games where he was over 500 yards passing. He knows how to throw the ball. He he, he can make the throws. Um, now it's it's a matter of uh, you know of, of him getting acclimated to an NFL offense and and learning how to win at this level. Sir, well, I'll give you a couple of things. One of, one of the big knocks on the kid has been his record. Uh, he's a couple of games below 500 overall at Texas Tech. He was five and seven last year. Jay Cutler, I'll give you two big time guys, big time you know uh, BCS level uh, players that had losing records. Jay Cutler went five and six at Vanderbilt. All right, he also has a gun. He has not he has not become a great quarterback uh, at either one of his stops, Denver or Chicago. But he is a competent starter, and frankly, he's been better than the Chiefs' quarterback for most of his time in the NFL. This kid's already got more charisma. 
charisma, more personality than the the wet shoe that is Jay Cutler uh, in the huddle and on the sideline. So I'm going to put Jay Cutler as the bottom for Patrick Mahomes. The top is a guy who went five and six in his senior year at Stanford, and that was John Elway. All right, so there's a couple of guys that were losers in their college career but went on to be good and then a Hall of Fame great, maybe the best quarterback that ever lived in John Elway. If he's somewhere between Jay Cutler and John Elway, the Chiefs will be really pleased with this pick. And I think that's his window of success. Now, look, he is boomer bust. He does make mistakes. And I love that video. I've seen the one Blair's talking about. I've also seen one where Kyle Bowler throws the ball 50 yards and through the uprights while on one knee at the 50-yard line. All right, so I guess that's 60 yards and through the uprights. And he stunk for the Ravens. So big arms don't mean you're going to be a stud automatically, but it's a great place to start. And with Andy Reid as his coach, you got to like his chances. Tim? Yeah, I think uh, Serena's exactly right when you talk about if he's somewhere in the middle of those two quarterbacks, you know, that, that's where he, that'd be a great place for him to be. You know, the one thing I like about this kid is, yeah, everybody talks about the gunslinger, but I, I think what he fits most in the, in the Kansas City Chiefs offense is that he's a he's not a runner first he, he's a guy that he's gonna he's gonna extend plays it's, it, it's great to watch him because his eyes are up down the field all the time you know he's looking down he's trying to make a play he's not just gonna tuck in and run I think that's one of the knocks they had against Watson is he was gonna go ahead and run I think the Chiefs want him to be a passer I think they want him to try and make plays they want a guy that's gonna look down the field a big strong arm and heck you know you're not gonna get away with throwing a ball across your body you know across the field uh, like you did in, in college but, you know, he has that in him. He's got a little bit of that moxie. He's got a little bit of that toughness. He's got a little bit of that gunslinger in him that, that, uh, that you know, I think this team will feed off of. It's always nice to have a guy in the huddle that you know that he's going to give you every opportunity to have success. And, you know, they, they have a nice offensive line that's grown together. They have a, a nice tight end. They got a, some good receivers. They got some speed. They got some athleticism. Now these guys are going to be running around. And just like uh, the coach used to say for the Chiefs all the time, is yeah, Al Saunders would say, hey, stay friendly. Wide receiver. Receiver, stay friendly because you never know when the ball is going to come to you, and that's going to be the, the, the call for the Chiefs wide receivers in the next couple of years. All right, guys, 30 seconds each. Our final hot topic, if you're a Royals GM, Dayton Moore, do you explore trades now or wait it out? Seren. Is it April 30th, 2017, or is it July 30th, 2016? Because that's when the answer to this question was absolutely yes. Uh, when they were falling out of the race last year, they should have been looking to move Edinson Volquez and Kendris Morales and getting pieces for the future. They could have taped it together this past offseason and gone for it from there, but they watched those guys walk and get nothing. The problem is now here we sit in a season that they put everything together. They went for it last year, and they've got to basically go for it this year. Uh, I'd like to say yes, start shipping them off, but they have no choice but to wait. Reality is, I don't think there's any trade they could make right now, so they're going to have to sit tight, hope this thing turns around, and if it doesn't, make the moves in July. Tim? Yeah, I think you got to hope that this thing turns around. Listen, every team has a bad month. Even Chicago Cubs in July were, were 12 and 14 last year, and they had a ton of wins and, and won the World Series. So, yeah, teams have bad months, but this is, you know, it's the beginning of the season. It's April. It's the first month. You know, nobody wants to have a bad month the first month, but, you know, I, I think you, you wait to about 60 games in, and if it's not any better, then you go ahead and start shipping guys off. Yeah. Blair, they've got, they are the worst team in Major League Baseball right now. Worst, worst record in baseball. Yeah. Thank goodness the, they've turned the page on the calendar. It's May now, and, um, and and we'll hope that's better. But how about losing all these games to the Twins and the White Sox, two two organizations that they've owned during this their, their championship year run, and can't win on the road, can't beat division teams. They own Central teams, uh, you know, in, in in 13, 14, 15, and and now they can't win a game against a the Central. These trends are so disturbing. But there is nothing it can be done about it right now. You got to wait it out and hope that May has been better. It will be better than April was. Yeah, right. In fact, they've lost more games to the Twins. Now they did all of last season. They have not won a game in the American Lake Central, which is scary. Awesome. Up next.